Hello. So this evening we're taking a look at the Wolf Pits Pro in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Orbex very kindly sent me a copy of this aeroplane the evening before last. So I've just got around to loading into the simulator and we're going to take it for a fly. We are at Boonville in the US, so that's D83 if you want to go and fly from here yourself. It's one of the nicer kind of backward, well not really backwards, but a quiet airfield just north of San Francisco, south of Oregon, along the west coast. So this aeroplane looks really nicely modelled. So full disclosure, I have loaded it once and had a quick go at starting the engine up. Um, but I haven't actually flown it yet, so we'll see how we get on. I've, I've familiarised myself with the controls. So you can see it looks really solid, doesn't it? There's nothing fragile about this aeroplane, which is kind of what you'd expect with a pits, I guess. So, further disclosure, I've never flown the pits special in Flight Simulator. So, never flown any of the versions of it. So this is going to be completely new to me, and I'm not really an aerobatics aeroplane person. So, my skills may be left wanting a little bit. Obviously, I can put it through some basic paces, but if you want to do some more advanced aerobatics, you might be wanting um, a pilot with better skills and experience of aerobatics to show you them. But I can certainly take the aeroplane through its paces and show you how it behaves. We'll do some basic uh, manoeuvres, you know, like rolls and spins and loops and things like that. Which it should be very good at, hopefully. So you can see the livery here depicts Paul Bennett Air Shows, which I'm guessing is a real uh, company that does air shows with this particular aeroplane because it's got obviously all of the sponsor logos down the side of the aeroplane as well. So looking inside the cockpit, it's all neat and tidy. The, the only problem I've seen, and I hope they fix it fairly quickly, is the instruments flash, particularly when you are at offset angles to them. So with head tracking, that becomes a little bit of an issue. But other than that, it's all neat and tidy and clean. It's very well done. It's kind of scary that your feet go either side of the um, additional fuel tank here, isn't it? Okay, so let's go and jump away from the drone camera and get the airplane up and running and take it for a flight, shall we? So just using the normal mouse controls to do this, let's go and put the master power on. The fuel tank's already on main. We'll move the propeller to max RPM. And it doesn't have any parking brakes, so that's worth pointing out. Uh, put the magnetos on. Uh, we can go and turn on the avionics because the engine gauges are on the avionics. Uh, we can go and calibrate the altimeter and push in the alternator breaker. Hold the tow brake on because we haven't got parking brakes and actually let's go and run the fuel pump and then start it. I'm guessing once the fuel pump but once the engine started, you don't really need the fuel pump. Okay. So let's go and turn the transponder on. It's got some nice um, avionics in it. And you can see, yeah, you can stir the stick around. The pedals are all nicely animated. Um, yeah, it, it's everything works as you think it should. So let's go and close the canopy. And put the head tracking on. So it's slightly panoramic on the default viewpoint, which I'm not sure if I like or not. And can we sit up enough to actually... Yeah, we can. We can sit up far enough to stick our head out of the glass, which is always fun. So I'm just pressing F12 a few times. Let's press it there. There we go. That's the key I've got mapped to reset my head tracking view. Okay, so parking brake off. And right turn. So it turns very sharply, which is kind of what you'd expect. It's a very small aeroplane. It doesn't have much inertia at all in any axis. It's very much down to you to control it. So yeah, I'm going to zoom in slightly to get rid of that panoramic view. 
or fishbowl view. So that's 50% power. So I think that's probably all we'll need for takeoff. It's very, very sensitive on the rudder. Let's pull back gently and we're in the air immediately. My phone's going mad while I'm doing this, isn't it? Always the way. As soon as you try to do anything, the world wants to get hold of you. Okay, we're coming up through... that's 100 knots. So let's have a look from outside. Sounds good, doesn't it? So I'm going to slow that propeller down. And we'll just gently climb out. You can see it pulls to the left quite a lot. So just while we were holding a, what looked like a steady climb, it was actually turning left the whole time. Or is that going to rudder? No, it's not. I was just wondering if the rudder is offset at all. I think the entire rudder might be though. Anyway. It's a voyage of discovery, first time you fly an aeroplane, isn't it? So there, there does seem to be... Yeah, there's a ridge in the, the canopy that blurs the background. I wonder if they'll ever... I wonder if that's real, if, you know, if that occurs in the real thing as well, or if it's an artefact in the modelling of the aeroplane. OK. So we're toodling along, let's go to 75% throttle then. Speed is slowly building, so we're coming up to 160 knots. Just on the, about 75% power. It does have a smoke system, so we can go and turn that on, I can show you that. So if we go around, move up here around. So if we go and Pretty cool, isn't it? It's a shame the smoke doesn't stay on for longer or hang in the air for longer, so you don't get to fly back through it very easily. But it's quite good fun for um, just seeing you know, your path through the air, I suppose. Okay, let's get back oriented with the runway and we'll do a loop see how we get on with trying to hold it in a straight line throughout our loop. So that wasn't the most accurate, um, well it wasn't even a loop, it was a reversal. I'm just getting the hang of how it feels. It's very, very, very alien at the moment. So it will knife edge. That's one way of finding out, a very dangerous way of finding out. So I had to go full power to get enough thrust over the tailplane to be able to control it on that axis. That was interesting. Yeah, it's interesting how much it travels sideways. It doesn't fly in a straight line at all. <laughs> 
it would take a fair bit of practice to become, you know, accurate with it. So can we... How much will it might fetch? A lot. That's interesting. stay somewhere near runway direction. It's interesting how it wants to corkscrew that way all the time. And it wants to slew to the left all the time. Yeah, look, even then we've come a long way off the runway axis. because I was um, banked slightly as I pulled up. You need eyes in the back of your head, basically, to be able to check the orientation marker on the horizon and to see the ground. <laughs> so this is one of the, I guess, the advantage. If in the real thing, you can feel it. You don't, you're not just going on visual stimulus. So let's take it up and see how it behaves in stalls and spins. So we'll go and go full power for a moment, or just inside full power. So it's holding about 140 knots and it's climbing at nobody's business. So it's coming up through 4,000 feet. Nicely. <laughs> so if I let go, it will come out. Interesting. What about if we... Just trying to see where the limits of its abilities are. It won't spin left as easily. And it comes out as soon as you let go. So it won't do a fully developed spin unless I just didn't enter it correctly. So with power on, it should be a lot more violent. Well, you would imagine so with the thrust over the rudder to cause it to get into that dangerous situation. won't tumble. That may be a deficiency of the flight simulator modelling though. What about if we try and tumble it out of the top of a climb? So look at it rotating. That's not me doing that. So if we try to hold it straight, look at it rolling on its axis. Oh, and it's tumbling. Awesome. Oh, yes. Brilliant. But it also comes out very, very easily. So let's see if we can do that with the smoke on and do that from outside and see if we can get it to tumble. It might be more difficult to cause it from the outside view, but we'll see. Take 
location right. Let's try it once more. So then when we start to slow down, we'll kick in a load of rubber. Look at that. How awesome is that? Brilliant. That's what I really wanted to see, because I've seen pits do similar things at air shows. I think there was a bit of a hole in the flight model there. It shouldn't have held on the tail for as long as it did. What about... Yep, that works. Let's try it again. <laughs> a little bit of left rudder pulls it out of the spin every time you know of, of a right spin obviously but yeah that's interesting so should we go and see if we can bring it in for a landing so you could have all sorts of fun with this trying to fly accurate aerobatics I mean I'm just throwing it around seeing how it behaves but the real trick as you saw me fail at miserably over the runway is to fly accurate aerobatics because the the forces through the aeroplane cause it to not fly in a straight line. So we should be able to quite hilariously side slip this. so difficult to see where you're going. All you can really do is work for the edge of the runway. It would help if I turn the smoke off, I suppose. That's an interesting aeroplane, isn't it? I mean, obviously it requires a lot of practice to fly accurately. But it's good fun. I'm tempted now to go and load the, the stock pits that comes with the simulator out to see how that goes. But that was good fun. So, I guess we just pull the fuel to be to kill the engine or just turn the mags off. Yeah, that worked. Interesting. So let's open the canopy. And there we go. So, as I said, I got it from Orbex. They sent me a copy. Uh, you can get it from their website. It's the Wolf Pits Pro. Um, it costs 28 Australian dollars. So that's about. 18 and a half US dollars, just over 14 pounds UK, 17 euros. So yeah, there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And I'll see you again soon. Take care.